And now I would like to invite all areas of the community to participate in this radio show. I would like to make sure that everyone, including um, older, younger generations, are part of the show. We want to hear your opinions and your your voice and your vision of the future of this world. So I have invited a um, college student from Georgia College State University. His name is Costin Dickinson, and I would like to invite him to talk to us a little bit about what is happening with the younger generations here in Atlanta today. Good morning, uh, Costin Dickinson. Uh, welcome to the show. Good morning, Mrs. Warner. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Um, I wanted to invite you because I think it's very interesting today to hear um, younger generations to talk about the kind of world that you are receiving from adults. I know there's been a lot of talk and speculations about what is happening with the environment today. And I would like to ask you, what is your opinion and um, respect to um what is the kind of environment you think you will be receiving when you are an adult? And do you feel that we are taking care of this world and the environment the way that we should? Um, well, as of right now, um, I think that the uh, younger generations um, that I'm part of seem or, or might feel a little bit overwhelmed with what we are uh, about to receive. But there's no doubt in my mind that we'll have the, um, the know-how or at least the... Uh, the desire to, to change and make our world better, even if not uh, for moral reasons, for uh, economic reasons, I think they'll present themselves in the future. So I think, you know, although we might be uh, handling a bit uh, or getting a bit of a mess, I think we might be able to uh, handle the situation in coming generations. Okay. Uh, well, that's good to know. It's not as bad as we thought. Um, there is always a worry about the, the kind of uh, things we're doing today to the environment. But I, I would like to ask you, if you could think of an ideal um, sort of like system that it will be created by your generations trying to improve some of the mistakes that we have made in the past, can you sort of like, I understand that you're uh, contemplating to study something related to architecture, but it's going to be more like an uh, uh, urban design. Uh, is that correct? Yeah, so right now I am uh, I have an interdisciplinary major, and uh, it's centered around answering a complex issue. And uh, the complex issue that I've chosen is um, how we can create completely self-sustaining communities. Uh, so it, it's along the lines of ecological urban design, and... Um, you know, it's really going along the lines of how can we create uh, a cradle-to-cradle -cradle, uh, design. I have a, an architect that's a, a mentor of mine. Um, his name is William McDonough. And, uh, you know, he really talks about how can we, you know, love all of the children of all species for all time, not just human, not, you know, not just humans, but also all of nature. How can we live harmoniously as opposed to being two opposing forces? And so if we can create, you know, cities or urban environments or communities that are self-sustaining, um, then, you know, maybe we might have, uh, you know, some ease in the stress of politics and trying to get resources or, or trying to get energy in different places and food in different places. So that's, that's what interests me, and that's what I'm trying to uh, figure out. And I'm doing research over the next two years to develop a thesis and and implementing that maybe on a global level, if that's possible. That is amazing. That That is so interesting to me, and I'm sure many listeners are really interested in finding out more about it. Um, can, can you give us an idea, sort of like an uh, example of what would you view in this uh, uh, environmental correct uh, areas. I mean, can you sort of like describe uh, s some, you know, some area, some community, what what kind of environment would they have, or maybe even a house or home, you know, or something that can give us an idea and sort of the improvement that this uh, this vision will provide to the environment? Um, yeah, well, it's a little difficult right now because not too many people um really know about it, uh, you know, unless you're interested in the topic like I am, but currently there being there are some cities being designed 
uh, especially over in China, that are completely self-sustaining. Uh, it goes beyond LEED certification and green buildings and green products, but really uh, designing the environment that we live in from the ground up on all levels um, to be completely in harmony with the natural environment uh, without toxic chemicals and um, you know much more natural products, but, but not going backwards either, completely embracing uh, technological advance and uh, integrating them together. So one example is a, a city in China, and what, you know, what they do in their design is study the habitat, the biota, the hydrology of the, of the environment, and then they build the human environment to be in sync with the natural environment as opposed to laying a flat grid on top and cutting back away the nature. They, they put it almost directly into the environment. And, um, you know, this, is, this seems like futuristic stuff, but it's actually right around the corner, uh, implementing total um, solar energy to power all of its systems from the industrial sites all the way to commercial and residential areas. Um, there won't be, you know, parks. There, it'll all be a park. It'll all be green space. And, uh, you know, it seems a little bit out there, but it really is right around the corner. And, you know, I think that technology grows on an exponential curve. So although solar energy seems to be out there as of right now, uh, I really think that nano solar technology and storage units are right around the corner. And it could make this, um, this kind of project very feasible and especially, you know, on a, on a wide scale. It might not be that far out there. This is really fascinating to me, and, and what is uh, more fascinated, uh, fascinating is the fact that uh, somebody who is 21 years old is so knowledgeable um, in this regard, and, and I feel like many people our age, you know, just uh, uh, and, and the old questions are not really understanding uh, how important it is to learn about this. Um, I, I wanted to ask you, how did you uh, personally become interested in this? Was it anything specifically, uh, just hearing about everybody talking about the environment, it was your own thing that it made you so interested in learning more about this? Well, actually, for me, it wasn't so much uh, the environment. I, you know, not too long ago, I wasn't necessarily very interested in the environment. I didn't have a, a very big moral obligation to the environment. Uh, it really came with my questioning of uh, the reality that I live in, my own existence, um, trying to find a philosophy of life and, uh, you know, my own spirituality. And out of that came uh, great respect for what allowed me the ability to be in this place in this time and, and I gave a lot of um, a lot of that you know respect and uh, I guess <laughs> you know I, I don't know I see the environment as having given me the ability to have my own life and so almost in a, a way I want to give back and say well you know as opposed to cutting back uh, what gave me the ability to be here um, you know, let's in, let's embrace it, let's harness it, and let's work with it uh, because the natural environment is an amazingly complex uh, and beautiful thing, and I don't think that we should phase it out of the human experience. I think we should really integrate it back into our experience and make it work uh, harmoniously in our lives. And for me personally, I know that, you know, in college I was able to, you know, go out and drive to parks for the first time and, and really spend some time in nature by myself, which I hadn't done, uh, you know, in Atlanta um, back when I was younger, and just gaining a lot of respect for something so mysterious as, uh, as the setting that we're given. And so through that, you know, I, I gained a lot of respect for the environment and uh, wanted to make sure that other people might be able to appreciate the mystery of our environment and the natural landscape that that I found and, and the respect as well. So. This is this is really impressive, and and I'm sure that everyone, as me, uh, can really appreciate what you're saying. This is something that I feel that many of us uh, should be thinking and should be appreciating of the world that we have. Uh, for whatever beliefs you have or whatever thoughts you have, it should always be in your mind the fact that we have been given this earth and this life and we should uh, take care of it. We won't have it forever and we should make sure that we can uh, uh, do the best we can with what we have today. So that that's very interesting to me and, and um, 
I wanted to ask you, do you feel that uh, many people in your generations are getting this kind of uh, uh, education? Because I feel that probably this is something that you've done in your own more than uh, an average college student is thinking of this. But do you feel that it would be sort of important to be able to teach this kind of vision that you have to other younger generations, just to make sure that if we are all thinking as a group, as a one humanity, how to take care of our earth, I think we could make a difference. Do you feel that education is really providing these tools today to have this kind of vision, or, or this is pretty much on your own, the way you're doing it now? Um, well, on some levels it's the education, but more so uh, this was a personal uh, kind of endeavor. Unfortunately, a lot of my friends aren't uh, exactly on the same page as I am in terms of respect uh, of the natural environment. Um, but I do think that it comes on multiple levels. I know that I'm very influenced in the music that I listen to and and various other parts of my life. So if I, you know, there are some kids that are aware of it, and uh, I think the knowledge is increasing. I mean, there is a green movement in the country, although it seems somewhat superficial. Um, I do think that the knowledge is growing, and I think people are starting to see, you know, how, you know, a city like Los Angeles from the sky looks somewhat like a cancer, you know, a cancerous tumor, uh, whereas, you know, a natural environment might not be, you know, it, it looks a little bit more beautiful. So how, you know, how do we, you know, integrate the right aspects? I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure about that one. Right, right. No, but I think that that you are definitely in the, in the right uh, sort of like frame of mind. You know, this is something that it needs to be integrated to our daily lives and and i think it's very interesting to hear from you all this you know i i for for a minute uh i i thought that maybe universities are teaching this but uh <laughs> maybe you know maybe it's through other channels that we can learn these things like you said through music or or you know other influences that you know that's why it's so important uh to provide um, the right sort of like uh, communications to younger generations. Like, I think it's great. You have something that I didn't have at your age, which is the uh, uh, computer. And so you can reach out and try to teach yourself things that maybe you're not getting in school. And, and this is a message for universities also to maybe integrate some of this education in their classes. And I think that will make it uh, more interesting for um, the person who's learning and will make it very, very useful for uh for a future and, and for this world so I, I think it's wonderful um I, I wanted to ask you one more thought that you would like to convey to the audience today there's there's any message that you can send out to maybe people your age or older people in terms of how they can approach uh sort of like the environment and and how they can learn more about what you were talking about because it's very interesting well i think that uh, being open to new ideas and, and different ways of thinking um and i think that uh we're growing you know as you can see from how fast the internet came and and how fast our technology is advancing that we really have to think exponentially and not so much linearly uh you know think more forwardly and, and be open to extreme changes in our future because I know that in my life I mean there have been extreme changes and, and we've had to cope with that so although it might seem like there's you know a, a doomsday sort of future I think that um, we should be open-minded and have a positive attitude as a human race to kind of uh, understand that you know with with more people with more education uh, and with more tools like the internet that provide uh, a large uh, information base that I've gained a lot of my knowledge from, um, that we can tackle, I think, um, you know, most problems that we are faced with, and I think that'll really help us advance, um, you know, in, in a good way, and, you know, we might not see some of the chaotic destruction that people prophesize. I, I really think that to be human is to... Um, is to see beyond our limitation uh, and to be forward thinking and then to transcend to a higher level of understanding uh, which makes the world
place. I think that's how we got to where we are now, as fast as we did. And I think that's where we're going to go if we keep a positive attitude, if we um, understand that everybody has a vested interest in life and and I think uh, cooperating with each other. And so really to, to be able to transcend to a higher level of understanding, I think that it'll be uh, very interesting to see where the world goes. I'm very excited about it. And I hope that we can implement a lot of these ideas and, and hopefully get a larger uh, population to attain this level of understanding. And, and, you know, I love the Internet, so I do uh, a lot of praise for um, free information. That, that really helped me out in developing my passion. Well, thank you so much, Costin. Uh, this has been very enlightening for me and I'm sure for many of the listeners. Um, I am very, very thankful for you being here on the show today. And I would definitely like to invite you to be back again. Uh, we would love to hear from you, uh, your views, and also to, to provide more information on how we can attain that level of understanding of what is happening to us in this world today. Uh, thank you so very much and we hope Hope to see you again, to hear from you again. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Okay. Well, thank you. You have a great day. You too. Thank you. And now, our concluding message. We invite leaders and members of the community to work jointly and become part of a historic moment to unify countries through common economic, cultural, and humanitarian goals. Thank you for listening, and we look forward to meet here next week.